I wanted to make this video for a couple months now to give an update about my Skytech Shadow PC uh, pre-built. Uh, I've done a lot of upgrading to it since I got it back in March of 2016, I think. I also want to talk about if you should buy a pre-built like this or build your own. A Skytech Shadow is a good PC. The case is big and it hasn't broken or gotten damaged in any way, from what I can tell. It has a lot of space for upgrades and additions like hard drives or a whole new system if you wanted to. You can take, uh, basically build a new system and put it in this case, or you can buy this case. Uh, I'll hopefully have it, uh, the specs and the case and everything linked down below, uh, or at least in the description. The GPU was a GTX 1050 Zotac 2GB card. I think that's what it was. It was good for what it was at the time of the purchase. Could have been better, but it did what I needed it to do. Uh, the CPU, on the other hand, was not so good. It was a AMD FX4300 4-core CPU. It gave me some problems in games I was playing at the time. Rendering took a long time while using Premiere Pro, because that was the main editing software I use. Now I use uh, DaVinci Resolve, because it just works. The RAM could have been better too, but I wasn't complaining. It was a single stick of 8 gigabyte of DDR3 memory. I think it was a uh, Hyper X Fury, I think, something like that. I can't remember the exact model. I had, to, for some reason, I couldn't even find the, to, to be able to buy another one. It came with the, uh, the PC came with a one terabyte Toshiba hard drive. That gave me a little bit of issues uh, like load times and stuttering in open world games like GTA 5, which I was playing, I'd say, fairly heavily at the time. I played it uh, a bunch, and every time I'd drive really fast, my hard drive would start kicking in and being weird. And the PC also came with a DVD read and write, or CD drive, I guess, but I rarely used it, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in, yeah, in a bit. Then after I would say a maybe roughly six months, I upgraded the CPU from a FX4300 to a FX8350, uh, a four-core CPU to an eight-core CPU, uh, and it was a really good upgrade. Uh, it helped with rendering times. It gave me more room so the GPU could work better for games like open-world games. Then around, I'd say, September 2017 or 18. I bought a new GPU. I went from a GTX 1050 2 gigabyte, 2 gigabyte card from Zotac to a 1066 gigabyte card from, I think it was EVGA is the uh, company. This was a big upgrade for my PC because it helped a lot with playing games at higher quality. I can even play games at 1440p. may not be the best FPS, but most of the games I played don't really need competition it's not competitive uh it also helped with uh recording because it there would be no lag the quality would be so much better uh, i could record at higher bit rates then around i'd say september 2019 i got a samsung evo 500 gigabyte ssd i think that's what it was and a 16 gigabyte stick of uh no it was actually two it was a two by eight so 16 gigabytes of RAM in total from G-Skill, I think, uh, was the company. I don't have the boxes right now uh, to look at it. The SSD helped so much with load times in games like Rust and GTA 5. And uh, it just works so good. And I'm glad I got it. It was also a huge uh, speed increase with uh, booting up Windows. It helped a lot because Windows 10 is a big, big operating system and it used to take forever to actually load up and get everything working on my PC. I got new RAM because I noticed there was a memory issue with a lot of games where it would use up to maybe five and a half gigabytes of RAM. So I would end up getting stuttering in games and freezing a lot. Freezing was a big issue I had. The RAM also helped with modding minecraft of course because i played a lot of that when i was streaming on mixer for a while there now about the cd drive i had to disconnect it from my pc so i could use the sata cable that was plugged into it uh for my ssd i 
couldn't find an extra one in my case, so I unplugged the CD drive and used the SATA cable. I could have ordered one, but there was no use like to get it. Would, you really didn't need to get one on Amazon because I was never really going to use the CD drive for anything. Most of these upgrades were out of necessity. New games were coming out and becoming more demanding. Recording was harder to do in editing. E rendering, too, took forever. As of now, I can't do any more upgrades to this PC besides RAM and storage without hitting a price issue. I have also started using my GTX 1050 2GB card for OBS Studio recording as a uh, way to limit as a way to limit FPS drops in games. Maybe I would do a tutorial on that later. I don't know, it just works for me. So on the decision of whether you should buy a pre-built or not is really up to you and your wallet. Most pre-builds are convenient but are lacking in performance per dollar, uh, or whatever country you live in in currency, and the ability to upgrade in the future unless you buy an up-to-date system, like, those costs like $1,000 to get a really good up-to-date, may not be the best, but it just costs way too much. But don't turn away from the idea of building your own. In today's market, there are tons of options from GPUs to CPUs, even RAM. Uh, you could build a better PC than mine for less money than I spent on this system throughout the years. And building a PC really ain't that difficult. There are tons of tutorials and build guides on YouTube from Linus Tech Tips, Bitwit, and many more channels that I can't really name because I never really watched as much besides them. Just stay away from companies, media companies like Verge. They can't build cardboard box, let alone a freaking PC. So I hope you enjoyed this little update for my PC and stuffs. Hopefully in the description I'll have necessary info on my PC, maybe even some audio stuff that I have going on now since I recently got a new audio setup. Uh, so check that out down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and peace.